All right. Good morning, everybody. It is my honor to introduce our next speaker here at the Almond Stage. We get to hear from Michael Coe of Blue Diamond Growers, and he was the winner of the Almond Leadership Program Special Project um, research this year. He did some research about the trend analysis of brown spot serious reject, and so he's going to share what he learned and observed through this project. Please help me welcome Michael Coe. Well, good afternoon, everybody. As she said, I'm Michael Coe. I'm a sales director with Blue Diamond's uh, ingredient team. Although I want to start off with a special shout out, two of them actually. First to Rebecca and Jenny and the Almond Board for putting on such a great program this year. Second to the uh, 2022 class who scattered about today. Look forward to staying in touch with you guys into the future. So we all know about navel orange worm. Uh, we talk about it a lot. We have best practices tools to mitigate and eradicate that threat uh, every year. But what happens when another pest comes and, and starts causing issues? So this analysis is, is about brown spot, but the inspiration was really uh, focused on the brown marmorated stink bug or BMSB and the growing threat that it's presenting to uh, California agriculture in general. And the reason it is a growing threat is, is it's a difficult pest to manage. Uh, five quick things that make it difficult. It's mobile, uh, can quickly move from crop to crop uh, within hours. It doesn't necessarily live where it eats. So that's one of the challenges. As you'll see in a little bit, it's adaptable to a lot of climates and regions within the United States. And it feeds on a wide range of uh, specialty crops. It's resistant to most pesticides. And for me, the biggest challenge is Feeding occurs at all five stages of growth. So from birth to adulthood, it can cause a significant impact to our crops. So here you'll see a list of all the specialty crops that it can impact and its level of risk uh, based on research that we have to date. What you will see in the bottom left in gray is almonds are currently a unknown. Now, part of this project is to assess whether or not it is time to move almonds from an unknown to a more significant threat on this chart. Uh, one specific call out you'll notice in high risk, uh, the peach cousin to the almond is, is called out as a high risk crop. So there is, there could be some logic to assuming that almonds are, are trending that direction as well. And in total, all the specialty crops that can be affected by BMSB, the valuation for it economically is north of $21 billion. So there is a lot of potential impact that this pest can cause. Geographically, uh, the first the first time we saw a BMSB in the United States was in the late 1990s. It originated in the Asia territories. And the first time we saw it on the West Coast was in 2004 uh, in Oregon. So what you'll see here on this chart is the various states that have severe agricultural risk associated with it due to this pest in red. Uh, as you can see, the northeast heavily affected. Uh, and on the west, our neighbors to the north, Oregon, uh, fighting a significant battle as well. And back in 2010, in the northeast, the apple crop actually saw $37 million worth of damage. And that was enough for that industry to pound the table and say, we need to know more. We need to build awareness. We need tools to combat this before it happens again. So before we get into the uh, meat and potatoes of this, uh, we're going to make some assumptions on this data. So first, it's to be reviewed and interpreted as directional in nature. And the data reviewed is going to be based on a portion of the Blue Diamond handle that has opted in to receive a breakout of the serious rejects associated with their harvest versus just one total serious reject number. Uh, attempts at supplementing that data with similar data from other handlers was not successful, so we're going to assume that the trends we're seeing at Blue Diamond are somewhat directional for the industry. We then take those percentages and equate it to what the volume impact and economic impact uh, was to the industry over the last seven years. So in total, uh, over the last seven years, we have seen about a 2x increase since 2015 in the percentage of serious rejects associated with brown spot. Uh, back in 15, around 6%, and we're approaching north of 15% of uh, the total rejects uh, being attributed to brown spot now. 
And that's all varietals, all regions. So we'll dive in here. It gets a little graph heavy at this point, so bear with me. Um, we're going to break it out by some of the key varietals and then by region, starting out with non-parel. You can see the trend is over the last two years is similar to what we saw on the previous graph, uh, living in that three to 5% range for most of the 2014 to 2019 range and jumping up to 12 to 13% of total serious rejects over the last two years. Looking at it by region, the red line is the north, the green is the central, and the purple line is the south. You can see the north is increasing at a more rapid rate than the rest of the regions. And, and that could be attributed to the geographic uh, uh, proximity to Oregon. Is there a migratory effect taking place? For independence, this one was interesting uh, based on the data because the floor in terms of percentage rejects was higher than the rest of the varietals that we looked at, kind of living in that 20% range. Uh, as you all know, independence is a relatively newer variety, so the data on the front end of this didn't have a lot of volume behind it, but it's grown every year with increasing uh, participation and yields from the crop. And regionally, again, uh, you might be starting to see a pattern at this point. The north is uh, leading the pack uh, when you break it out by region. And as we get into more pollinizer type varieties, uh, you'll see a more significant spike over the last two years. So again, in that 8% range for Monterey as a total, and all regions seem to be sloping the same direction here over the last two years. Uh, the one unique call out here is the North didn't lead the pack for Monterey in 2020 or 2021. Butte Padre, uh, relatively consistent for a five-year period, kind of in that 10% of total serious rejects, and then shot up to over 30% over the last two years. And again, you do see uh, significant spikes across all regions, but all said and done in 2021, uh, the North did lead the pack. Aldrich, you're seeing that similar spike, uh, a big jump from that 10% range to 30% range in the 2020-2021 crop year with the North region specifically having the most significant increase by, by a large sum. Carmel, uh, extreme steady growth over the last two years, uh, peaking at 27% last year, with all of the regions essentially cluttered uh, in the most recent crop years. And lastly, Wood Colony, again, shooting up from the 2019 to 2021 crop years from 5% to 25%, with the North and Central leading the pack uh, for this particular varietal. And we don't have all of the finished uh, data for 2022's harvest, but the part level of participation has grown and the overall rejects are kind of in line with what we saw the last two years. So more data uh, uh, associated with the numbers now and it's lending credence to what we saw over the last two years, just by the growing level of participation. So what are the high level takeaways from this data? Uh, it does appear that there is a growing trend or threat associated with uh, brown marmorated stink bug, uh, other stink bug uh, species, as well as leaf footed plant bug that we should start putting a more keen eye on here into the future. Um, the North region does appear to have uh, the, the greatest rate of impact versus the central and the south. So there could be that migratory effect taking place. Is it a matter of time until the central and the south see similar peaks? Uh, it's unclear whether or not any specific varietal is impacted more than others. Uh, the one specific call out being independence did appear to have a higher floor in terms of total serious rejects relative to the rest of the varietal. So is there more work to be done in terms of which specific variety is most at risk? And at this point, uh, at this trajectory, brown spot would be approaching about 20% of all serious rejects. Uh, which would be approaching its, uh, the, for the industry, the second biggest threat to the crop next to our friend, the navel orange worm. So from here, again, we're making some assumptions that the percentages that we saw at Blue Diamond are directional for the industry. So this graph takes those percentages and for the blue bars, you're looking at total volume impact year to year from 2014 to 2021. And the red line would be the uh, farm value impact uh, based on the yearly average farm price reported to the USDA and the Almond Board. So high levels of impact in 2020 and 2021, 
And based on the depressed market conditions we see today, uh, north of $14 million in economic impact. But I wanted to take a second look because we understand that today's prices aren't an average price or a price where we want to be long term. So this next graph takes the average of the last seven years farm price, bringing us up to a $2.57 uh, per pound average price versus the $1.70 ish price that we saw last crop year. Uh, so same volumes with a $2.57 average farm price, the total economic impact would be approaching $23 million. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the presentation, the Apple industry said enough's enough at $37 million of economic impact. So at what point do we as an industry feel that we need to start diverting our attention and resources to being prepared for this before it becomes a massive issue? So what's next? Um, it's clear that this is a pest that's new to the United States. I think there's a lot of research being done uh, in, in various parts of the country, dealing with it at different levels, but it's new. It's only been around for about 20 years for us in the United States. So I think we need to accelerate awareness, uh, make people understand that there is an, a growing threat to our crop, and uh, from there, start building those best practices, uh, knowledge, and tools to help mitigate or eradicate when the, when the pest does enter your field. Um, again, pesticide application, not necessarily an ideal combative method for this pest, especially in the state of California. Pesticides aren't going to get easier to use, so is pesticide the way we want to attack this pest moving forward? Three states are looking at uh, a different method, which is introducing a natural predator into their states. Uh, the state of Utah, Oregon, and Michigan are all looking at a species of wasp that attacks brown marmorated stink bug eggs, kills the host, and then hatches a new, uh, a new wasp in its place. So you kind of have that build effect with that species growing to continue to combat BMSB. The downside is so far the research suggests that the species of that wasp domestically are only about 10% effective against uh, BMSB versus the uh, uh, species that was at this pest's original home in Asia that was 80% effective. So that was the samurai wasp, and Oregon has identified some samurai wasp activity in Oregon, and they're hoping to track that to see if there is a level of success in terms of mitigation via the natural predator route. So with that, are there any questions? Softball? Softball? What? Um, you can look at all your graphs and you can see there's a huge spike that happens in 2021. 20, 20, what can you attribute to that spike? It seems like it's like growing steadily from 2014 on, but then in 2020 and 2021, it's just like straight up. It's a great question. So I will acknowledge being on the sales and marketing side, I'm not in the field every day. Uh, um, so I don't know exactly what's attributing the growth. What I do know is the anecdotals, the chatter around it has been increasing. So I actually reached out to, uh, to Mel to see if we had data to back up the anecdotals. Um, me personally, I, d I do not know what the, what the growth, what is causing the growth rate outside of the pest is just over time migrating, adapting to the climates that we have. Um, and it may be a little slower. California isn't necessarily its preferred climate. But that doesn't mean it can't survive and thrive here. It may just be taking a little longer for it to see the levels of impact it's seeing in Oregon and the Northeast. Great job, Michael. If you had another year to work on this, what would you build on to what you've learned? Good question. Um, I mean, at this point, I would love to to have it be more of an industry look. Um, you know, I, Blue Diamond's data is an obvious place to start for me, um, but it'd be great for us from an awareness standpoint to, at least for the top, I don't know, two to five serious reject trends, develop the expectation in our industry that we need to account for what's what, not just bucket it all together. Some serious rejects don't pose the growing threat that, that you know, different pests can, navel orange worm, this guy, like over time, those things can grow. I think we look at ants as something that's fairly easy to manage and it doesn't necessarily have a growth rate that it does. So 
for for me, I would love to start getting industry participation and understanding or monitoring, you know, which serious reject is attributed to which pest. So that way we as a group can understand, is it just certain regions? Is it just us? If this is an industry-wide issue, tracking it holistically is going to help us better prepare for it. Now, this wasp that uh, you alluded to, do they know the downside to that wasp uh, possibly down the road? Because, you know, there's always a good side, but what might be the downside to that wasp? Well, the, the, if you're alluding to do they attack humans, from what I've read, th this particular wasp is not interested in us. So uh, that would make it a unique solution to the problem. I had a question for you, Michael. Um, with other research that's being done around this um, issue, is it coming mostly from private companies or are there some public institutions that are doing their own research? Uh, no, it's, I, there is public. Um, a lot of it is different industry specifically, it appears. I know the uh, Almond Board has worked with, uh, I believe, UC Merced, Modesto Merced. Uh, so there is some work being done. Uh, you know, being financed by groups like the Almond Board, but so far it appears that a lot of industries are tackling it themselves. Um, the Northeast is kind of looking at what works for them. Um, and then, you know, the West Coast is starting to deal with it now at a growing level. So, you know, there could be opportunities for, for the country to collaborate because this doesn't, this no longer appears like it's just a geographic issue for one area. While they might like a certain type of climate, they're starting to migrate out into climates that are different than their preferred. So I think that would be the biggest cause for concern. Any other questions? All right, let's give Michael one more big round of applause. Oh, no. And I think there might be like three more minutes to go and bid on the silent auction. So if you'd like to do that, now is the best time. I'm really worried about this. <laughs> Yeah. 